What's the matter, Mac? Why so tight-lipped lately? He used to be my big tip-off man when I was a reporter, lagging it around this part of town for news. Yeah, I know, Jim, but things are a whole lot different these days. What do you mean? Just because I'm running the paper now, I don't rate your help, is that it? No, Jim, now you know that, ain't it? But with these tongs on the warpath again, and all these gangsters, and the chinks being run in the way they are, the guy that keeps his mouth shut is the one that lives the longest. Savvy? Yeah, I savvy. Can do something for you? What? My, my dog's just been hurt. I wonder if I could get some poison, put him out of his misery. Sorry, I can't do it. Anyway, not without a prescription. Oh. But if your dog is hurt, why don't you call up the SPCA? You can phone from right back there. Right. No, no, never mind. Somebody don't change that gal's mind. You're going to have another suicide story before morning. I wonder what's the matter with her. Hard telling. You see a lot of her kind down this part of town. They'll probably fish her out of the bay tomorrow. Maybe you're right, but I don't think so. So long, Mac.
you to break into my room. I haven't any right. You can have me arrested if you want to scream loud enough, but you won't. What makes you so sure? Because all the screams taken out of you. Apparently, you need some help. What's the trouble? If you hadn't butted in, I, I wouldn't have needed any help. Oh, yes, you would. Somebody would have had to bury you. You must be nuts. What made you try a screwy thing like this anyway? I, I didn't know any other way. Didn't have any money and nothing to eat. Today, that came back. That was my last hope. Oh, you're a writer. Well, I thought I was. I guess they're just a lot of words. Say, there's a lot of words in the dictionary, and somebody gets paid for putting them there. Maybe you haven't hit your stride. What I do. It's only about the nice things that we ever get disappointed. Unpleasant things are always true. Death had come suddenly. Sam was unable to adjust himself to the solitary room and tried to write his friend as they customarily had talked together. Dear friend, neither of us had any idea, I am sure, that my parting yell to you from the gas station would be my last crack at you for some time. I feel sort of rude, as though I'd left something unfinished, because I didn't say goodbye a little better. You don't care, though. You wouldn't. Your pajamas are hanging where you left them, on the floor. None of us know how to act. Towser's the only one who's natural. He just wags his tail and wonders why no one will play with him. Well, it's getting late. It's kind of silly, my writing you like this, but I fell out to say goodbye. So long, Frank. I'll be seeing you, Sam. Why, well, say, that's great. Definitely the editors didn't think so. Well, I'm an editor, a newspaper editor, and I think it's good. And I also know a girl is very silly to let a few rejection slips bother. I've had enough to pay for the White House. Say, if you want to write, okay, I'll give you a chance. My name's Manning. I'm managing editor for the Tribune. You come down to my office in the morning, and I'll put you to work. How's that? And say, listen, a good reporter always needs an advance in salary. Here. I'll see that you earn it. Don't forget to take this bird in, throw those blues away, and don't turn on the gas. So long. Thank you. You're welcome. There, that's one of our smartest numbers. I think I'll take it.
spotted her, didn't you? I did not. You snapped me with a rubber bullet, and I don't stand that kind of disrespect from any sob sister. You better answer your telephone. That's yeah, probably the whip. Ooh, she told me to bring something home tonight, and I can't think of what it was. Something with feathers on it. A chicken? An egg. <laughs> I don't? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be right in. That was a boss. He probably wants me to go over and cover the food show. Well, I was at the courthouse this afternoon covering the bob head bandits. She certainly is tough. It was thrilling, though. Well, I see it. You get all the breaks around here, and look at me. I've got the natural ability to go out and do big things, and what happens? They set out chasing pictures or overcovering the zoo. Well, you ought to be right at home there. <laughs> I tell you, with my personality, I should be interviewing big movie stars. Oh, nice all oh. Hi, boss. Send for me. Hello, Eddie. Do you got an assignment now? Not just now, but I just finished up one of the best stories of the year. You'll find the first draft of it in this evening's sporting edition. Yeah, what is it? Oh, I covered the convention of the aviculturists, and boy, was that a meeting, was it a meeting? Aviculturists? What do they do? Free canaries. Say, listen, Eddie. You know there's a lot of Chinese being run into this country illegally, don't you? Why, any fathead knows that. The federal men grab a bunch, have them deported, but they don't seem to plug up the hole where they come in. Maybe they don't know where to look. That's just it. And you're the guy that's going to find out where that hole is. I have every reason to believe that some Chinese merchants and some big shot citizens in this town are working together, running those coolies in somewhere along this coast. Oh, what do you know about that? And I want you to find out who they are. Who, the coolies? No, the men behind the guns. Do you think you can get a line on them for me? You leave that on me. Now listen, Eddie, you've got to take it easy and be careful. It's dangerous. I was working on this case myself. Up until last night, they got wise down there and took a shot at me. D did you notify the police? Certainly not. I don't want them to get wise and lay low. I want to catch them operating. I'll bust this thing wide open in the paper and let the government finish the job. Well, I I I'm sorry, Chief. I, I just remembered. Betty wants to keep me on that divorce uh, scandal of Burnett's, you see. And I've got several more keyholes to peek through. Yeah, wait a minute. Bailey, take Eddie Morgan off of that Burnett divorce case. That was put in the morgue two weeks ago. She's going to the hospital to have a baby. He's taking the next room just to be near her. Hey, where are you going? Why, to Chinatown. Old Gumshoe Morgan, always on the job. That's me. As I was saying, you have to be more than a beautiful blonde to be the fair-haired boy around here. You must have brains. What are you going to cover, the schools and churches? No, my dear. I'm going down with a heathen Chinese, slinks in and out through amber shadows, where he smokes incense, burns opium, and smells punk, where he eats bean sprouts and takes his exercises banging gongs. What is it, the Chinese Fourth of July? Ah, you want to know, do you? Listen, I'll tell you this much. I'm going to crack down on a big oriental importing racket. Are you listening? Say, Eddie, give me a cigarette, please. I just run out. Good, huh? Thanks. Check. What's the trouble, Nana? You look worried. Well, I don't want you to think I'm complaining, but I'm not earning my salt around here. Don't you think I'm capable of handling a real assignment? Well, certainly I do. You've been doing splendidly. What's on your mind? Well, that story that you sent Eddie down to Chinatown to cover is pretty big, isn't it? It'll just about blow the lid off this town. Well, why did you give it to him? Now listen, let me put you straight about Eddie Morgan. That lazy exterior covers a heart of gold, and he's got a great nose for news. But I used to live right next to Chinatown. Went through there every day, and I know a lot of them by name. Why wouldn't I be the logical one to trail a yarn down there? It's no job for a girl. The night I met you, I was down there on that story. And they got wise to me. How did you find that out? <laughs> they sent me a warning. Well, you haven't any objections to my doing a little snooping on my own hook, have you? I certainly have. Now look here. Snooping that story is dangerous. You're prying into a very profitable business. Illegal, of course, but worth going to any extent to protect. 
Now promise me you won't do anything about it. Don't go yet. Hello. Sure, send him in. How about that promise? Oh, all right. I promise. But you would like to know how, when, where, and by whom these Chinese are brought in, wouldn't you? Sure I would. But not at the expense of having anything happen to you. You know, I saved your life once. I doubt if I could do it a second time. And another thing, I don't want to have to break your door down the next time I come to see you. <laughs> you won't. And I won't order you out. <laughs> oh, come in, Margaret. Oh. Hello, Mr. King. Miss Gould, this is my fiance, Miss King, and her father, Mr. Roger King. How do you do? How do you do? Excuse me. Don't forget that promise. I won't. Sit down. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? You bet. You're quite friendly with your reporters, aren't you? Oh, don't be silly, Margaret. I saved Miss Gould's life once. Naturally, she feels indebted. I suppose it was an effort to cancel that debt. It made her offer to undertake one of the most dangerous jobs that's ever come into this office. I was trying to talk her out of it. She's a great reporter. You speak about this Chinese business? Yes, I sent uh, Eddie Morgan out on the story. She wants his assignment. Well, that's why we dropped him here today. To try to dissuade you from going on with this foolish investigation. That's carrying patriotism too far. You must think of Margaret. What you're doing is dangerous. It's unfair to her. Jim, don't get angry with Dad. He's only thinking of me. And afraid you'll get hurt. I'm afraid too. Won't you forget all about it for me, please? You make me feel like a child. You go right ahead with the wedding plans and don't worry. I'll run the Tribune just as I have been doing. I couldn't find any chop suey in China, so I'm not leaving here till I get some. Come on, let's go. Hello, Mildred. Good evening. I haven't seen you for a long time. I'd like a package of Pepsi. Thank you. How's the boyfriend? He's fine, thanks. He's working the bank now. One of these days, you two will be running off and getting married. I'm afraid not. Does Wu Sin still want to sell you to that old Chinaman up in Sacramento? Yes. Wu Sin says I can't marry Charlie Sun. And that something's liable to happen to him if he doesn't stay away from here. Charlie won't stay away. I'm so faint for him. And you remember, this is America, not China. Good luck, Neil Lynn. Heaven knows we girls need it. Good night. Good night, Miss Nona. Get away while Wu Sin is at Tom meeting. No, there's always Lu. His eyes belong to Wu Sin. Then I'll stay here. You should. I'm not even supposed to talk to you. Tell his son. I want to talk to you. Where did you manage your possible way? 
Merlin is a beautiful lily, a pile of beyond the price. I'm very much in love with Merlin. I'd like to marry her. Have you 20,000 in gold to pay for that honor and pleasure? You know I haven't. Then you will not poison her mind with thought of happiness with you. I can take care of her. I have a good position now. I can save, open a store someday. Why, we'd be very happy working together. That was not the wish of her father's. She was left in my care, and I will carry out their august wishes. But this is the 20th century. We're living in America. Buying wives, forcing young girls to submit to insults by decrepit old men isn't being done. Your gods wouldn't condone that. I have respected our God and their teachings, and they have rewarded me with good amount of earthly good. Merlin has the blood of courageous fathers in her veins. She will obey and respect their customs. But that will kill her spirit. Can't you see we're in love? We're meant for one another. Marriages are made in the moon. We have nothing to do with them. I made an arrangement with an honorable countryman of yours. He also wants her. You will not encourage bad behavior in Merling by talking to her again. Your eyes will not see her when you leave here, nor ever again. He's in your honorable store now, named Eddie Morgan. That's good. pretty piece of crockery. Maybe you could uh, keep your legs in that. How much? Nine hundred dollars. From the Ming Dynasty. Eight hundred years old. <laughs> well, I hardly think our eggs are quite that old. We have some other things which are beautiful and much cheaper. The crown. Yes, thank you.
Lucina forbidding me to see you anymore. I knew that was coming. Well, let's run away. They'll never find us. There's no place we could go without being found. You know that. You'd have to leave your job. No one would ever hire you again. Wusen would see to that even if he didn't do more. I'll never give you up, Wusen. That killed. Three wild monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. <laughs> How much? 25 cents. So. Well, thank you. Don't you go. Some place around here I can get a slug of rice juice. My throat's pretty sore too. Thirsty. Mm -hmm. You follow me. All right. Oh, young Ilama. we get the dough in advance. Well, I don't know about boss about paying in advance. This ain't no picnic. We'll go for a five-year wrap if we get caught with them coolies. Now go and tell your boss we want the dough. Well, I think I'll pay you myself. You collect them later. No, I think you better do the job first. Well, come on, let's get going, then. That speedboat ought to be back from Heimdella by midnight. Oh, uh -huh. 
You don't understand that lingo. Don't I, though? I was born just around the corner from Pell Street. I've got to get into a telephone. See you later, kid. No, Manning isn't here. Well, where can I find him? He said he'd be over to King's if anything important came up. Come here. Come here, like Oh, look. Hello. What are you doing here? Who are you talking to? Wait a minute. That man's here again. Say, are you talking to the office? Yes. Let me have that phone. Hey, this mob's going to have to get up a whole lot earlier if they think they can slip anything over on me. I just found out. They meet a freighter out of sea, transfer the cargo to a speedboat, drive in here underneath one of the docks. The guys then climb up into a big motor truck and are driven to a warehouse right in this very neighborhood. Boy, do I get them or do I get them? You sure uh -oh. do. And the truck has a driver's seat and clothes. It's painted gray without any signs of any kind. There's three men on it, two white and one Chinese, and they're going to make the exchange tonight. I can give the license number, but you're probably too surprised to remember it. I'll get that later. Hello. Pencil pencils ready. This is Morgan. Here's where your headline star reporter gives you the biggest beat of the year. Are you all set? Now listen. Hello. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that a panic? Have you got a nickel? Or two nickels? You might want to phone yourself. Give me the first one. That's it. Morning. Charlie Sam and Wu Sim exchanged words last night about the beautiful, so disobedient Miolin. He holds high thought of you. I hope I deserve them. It has long been known to me that honorable and deserving men would seek your hand in marriage. Many men have spoken of their desire. A rich men, poor men, old men, and one young man. Charlie San? Yes. He is of good heart and has right for our fathers. The world might hold a great deal for him. What does your heart say? It says if I never see him again, the little black devil should put out my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so he will have to be tested and proven. Go, kneel at the shrine and beseech your gods to keep hope alive in your soul. Thank you, Musin. A whole lot more, only that look up a cop had to come in and yank me out. Yeah? What'd they give you to drink? How do I know? I didn't drink it. Poured it in my shoe and it burned my sock off. <laughs> now listen, Morgan, I'm not gonna bust anything on this until I get the whole dope. I want to know whose boat they came in on. Is Harandella the name of a ship? Yes, it is. When does it dock? This morning? Yeah. Wonder where it was last night. Well, that all depends. They didn't reach quarantine until dark. They probably anchored and came in this morning. Why? Oh, I was expecting a friend on it. Yeah? Well, most of the passengers are fish. Thanks. Mr. Bain? 
Yes. I'm Miss Gould of the Tribune. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. I want some information. I want to find out who the steamship for Hirondella. How do you spell that? H-I-R-O-N-D-E-L-L-A. If it's a company who owns the majority of stock, who the captain is, what berth it docks at, and its location about 10 o'clock last night. I also want to know what its cargo itself and the last port it cleared. You can call me at the Tribune, but it's understood, of course, that this information is strictly confidential. Naturally. get a second-hand kick out of those funny, scared little brats, their mothers looking on with loving eyes. Life doesn't mean much unless you have someone to love and plan for, does it? No, I guess you're right. Even an interesting job is secondary. Say, speaking of jobs, Eddie Morgan brought in a great yarn on the coolie traffic. He did? You bet. And I have a hunch that when the story breaks, it's going to land some of our most respected and prominent citizens right in the federal prison. Hello? Yeah, right here. It's for you. Thanks. Yes? Yes, this is Miss Gould. Here's your information about the Hirondella. Last port of call, Tampa Bampo, Mexico. Docked at berth 109 this morning. Captain John Olson. Owned All Countries Navigation Company. But from our investigation, the stock is all held by... A oh. Well, thank you. Yes, I'll be right over. Anything wrong, Nona? No. No, I was just thinking. That Chinese story. Those men who may be sent to prison. A scoop for you means disgrace for their families. You've got to be hard-boiled in this game, Nona. All the news that is news. That's been my policy ever since they stuck me in this office, to give this rag some pep. And our circulation proves that it's a pretty good motto. You'll print everything, no matter who it hits? Certainly. That's my job. Besides, those men are breaking the law. Yes. That's true. here to see you. She says she's from the Tribune. Have a come up. Who was it? That reporter we met in Jim's office yesterday. She wants to see me. What for? I can't imagine. Maybe she's hoping to get a scoop on your wedding. <laughs> she's a bit premature. I'm beginning to think Jim's already married to his paper. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Kim. 
thing. It's terribly difficult for me to tell you this, but I've just learned something that rather seriously involves your father. Really? Perhaps you know that Mr. Manning is bending every effort to uncover an organization that is running Chinese illegally into this country. Why, yes. Jim's talked a great deal about it. It should be quite a scoop for his paper. I have definite information that a load of coolies arrived last night on a boat owned by your father. Do you realize what you're saying? I realize perfectly, and it wasn't easy to say. Why, the whole thing's absurd. You're branding my father as a crook. One of the Tribune reporters has already discovered that the coolies are taken off the ship in small boats, landed on a warehouse on the docks, and brought by truck into Chinatown. What he doesn't know yet is the name of the ship and its owner. But he's bound to find that out before very long. Just why are you taking such an interest in our affairs? I'm thinking of Mr. Manning. He's sworn to expose this ring, and it's pretty hard when he finds out that his fiancée's father is one of the men implicated. Oh, I see. You're thinking of Mr. Manning. He saved your life, didn't he? You're grateful. Are you in love with him, too? Yes, I am. I don't think there's anything more for you to say. Very well. what she said. Oh dear, that's ridiculous. It's perfectly obvious she's trying to make trouble between you and Jim. But she said she had proof the Chinese came off your ship. Margaret, you know that I'm above that sort of traffic. Do you suppose your captain could be doing it unbeknown to you? Oh, that's impossible. Olsen's been doing 17 years. I should have scratched her eyes out. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? Well, naturally, there I shall investigate. I'll do that right away. It is an honor to have your illustrious presence in the far board of Ocean. We're in trouble, Wu. Travelers are inevitable at death, my friend. Well, this is the whole thing in a nutshell. The editor of the Tribune has sought out to uncover and expose the entrance of your countrymen into the United States. That was known to us. He has been successfully eluded. Not as successful as you think. I found out all about the business last night. One of his reporters has the whole story, a woman reporter, by the way. Women's words are for children and the flowers. They don't beat heavily on the ear. And they will in this case. If the story will come out in the paper, that means the whole business will be run to the ground. Can they be reached? No, I don't think so. Naturally, I shall plead ignorance of the whole affair. I've given orders for my book to clear. We'll probably get away before the story breaks. That leaves you in rather a bad hole. Our dealings have been honorable and fair for the last ten years. Is that not true? Certainly. I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming a young editor with too much ambition. Too much for his own good. I am capable of handling of the situation. We have had obstacles before. They have been removed. I'm looking to you for protection, Wu. I have every reason to believe I can depend on you. You have the word of all sin. Thank you.
有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有今日聚會退日，委會有係辦事，未得知到點，辦法啦，退呢。I can't talk to you. Get me Charlie's hand. Look, bring those implements. Yes, sir. You sent for me? Yes. You have been greatly honored, my son. The brethren have selected you to perform an important service. A gentleman by the name of Manning is making war upon your countrymen. He seeks to drive them from these shores or behind prison walls. His weapon is not sold, but the printing press. She must be silenced. I can't do that. I'm not a hatchet man. Why, I don't even approve of the method you're using. It is not for a man young in years to question the decision of man wiser in the wisdom of the world. But those things aren't done anymore. They've disappeared along with the queue and other traditions. Is respect for the wisdom of your elders. Among the tradition you have discarded? No. But don't you see? I have a respectable place in life. A good job. This would make me an outcast. So, you think only of yourself. The fate of your countrymen is of no consequence. I will not be a killer. You desire the hand of Meulin? You know I do. That is a price. But the price is too great. No price is too great. Lifelong police awaits you when you have fulfilled your mission.
You will find what you need here. And I am confident that your blood will not turn to water. What in the world is the matter? It's Charlie. Charlie? Oh, come in, child. Now tell me, what's wrong? Charlie's gold. To kill a man. Oh, nonsense. No, no, it's true. The talking and they chose Charlie to carry out their orders. But surely Charlie's too sensible a boy to do a thing like that. I begged him not to go. But Charlie Sen said that's the only way he could have me. Who Sen said that was his reward. I want Charlie. And Charlie wants me. So he's gone. Gone where? I don't know. Well, do you know who's, who he's gone after? Charlie wouldn't tell me. He only said that he was enemy of our people. Oh, I see. Well, Neil Lynn, you bring Charlie here and we'll talk him out of this. I'm afraid it won't do any good. Of course it will. And don't you worry. You just know that everything's going to be all right. Run along and find Charlie. Thank you, Miss Lilna. Get a hold of some pictures on Chinatown and send them up here right away. Yeah. Now here comes the hot shot. Those chinks were taken off a ship by the name of the Hirondella. Who owns the Hirondella? That. I can tell you. Who? Mr. King. Mr. Roger King. Are you sure? Yes, I am. And I've had the story since last night. But I didn't think you'd want to print it. Hey, Mac, find out who owns the Hirondella. Make no mistake about it. Get me some pictures and the full history and send it right up. Right. Boy. Stop. Eddie, get me all the dope you can about King. How many boats he owns, where they dock, what they trade in. Fill the story around it and bring it in. Check. And I still claim I'm the best little news hound in Dogville. Well, you didn't keep your promise, did you? No. Well, that's good. You've learned the most important lesson for a reporter. Here's your headlines. Oh, hello, Margaret. Come in. Bang out a couple of columns on this. All right. I suppose she's been filling you up with a lot of bunk about father. Well, I have a very conclusive story on it, but I didn't get it from her. How do you know about it? She called on me this morning on the pretext of warning me. Rather decent of her, I'd say. Oh, I thought you'd stick up for her. Jim. 
You're not going to put all of that in the paper, are you? Yes, I am. You're going to use Father's name? I don't see how I can avoid it. Then I'm sure the upright truth seeker couldn't lower himself to marry the daughter of a criminal. Margaret! Here's something of yours you might have use for. Give it to that sneaking reporter in whom you're so interested. That's not a bad idea. haven't any gas jets in this place, have you? <laughs> no, but it would be perfectly safe if I did. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. aren't you? Yes. What will you do with me? What'll I do with you after I punched all the dope I want out of you? I'm gonna send you over to the cops. Come on, now talk. Who sent you? Oh, I know all about this. Me oh, you're hurt. I'm all right. Where's who sent? He's gone out the city. We two guys beat around the back door. Uh, okay. What's in here? Who's in living quarters? Where's the key? He took it with him. Guess we gotta break her down. Made his getaway, all right. And he was going to sell me over to a rich old Chinaman. The only way Charlie could save her was by carrying out the orders of the Tong. They've loved each other ever since they were children. So you were willing to kill for her? Yes, I'm glad I missed, though. Missed hell, you spoiled my best suit. Do you, Mio Lin, take this man, Charlie San, to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. James Manning, 
Do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to cherish, honor, and protect throughout life? I do. Do you the ring? Yes. Place it on the third finger of her left hand. With this ring, I do thee wed. With this ring, I do thee wed. By the power vested in me by this state as justice of the peace, I pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> it's generally customary for the groom to claim the bride. Yeah. <laughs>